My mother is a very stylish woman. Very stylish. I always loved clothing. Um, I was her doll, <laughs> so she would dress me up. I, I played piano as a child, so we, I had a lot of piano recitals, and she always had the uh, pretty party dress. So it was in my life um, from a very young age, is uh, the knowing that what you wear can really make a difference. Right. And you know, it can make you feel special, it can make an event more special, it can have a visual impact. Uh, dressing for an event is very different than dressing for day to day. And I've gone more towards event dressing and very theatrical dressing. I went to private Catholic school, so I wore a uniform a lot of the time. So a lot of the clothing that was special for me was more for events and parties. Uh, going out was an occasion for us. It was always something that we all dressed up for. Both of my parents love parties and we would go to a lot of parties and they would throw these huge parties at, at, when I was growing up with over a hundred people. Like my first year, yeah, my uh, first year birthday, um, they would fill the the whole block with cars, people coming from to come to the party. So the parties were famous, people... Oh yeah, oh yeah. People knew about the parties that my family threw. And they would have the pig rows, they would have a big hole in the back, and then... Over the year, like, what, what occasions would be happening? Would it, it be birthdays? It was usually birthdays, yeah, usually birthdays for us, or uh, New Year's Eve parties. Summer parties. So people got ready for these parties. People they did. Really, the block got ready for them. Friends and family. Everybody. Yeah. Well, the block. You know, if somebody, if a neighbor came by complaining, my dad would talk to them, offer them a beer, and everything would be fine. Oh. That's they would so become part. They would become part of the party. What were they doing the cooking? Like where? Where was? They? My dad. Like my. Actually, both my mom and my dad are are good cooks. Uh, my dad taught my mom to cook. And they, and also it was such a communal affair where if the pig was roasting, people would look at it and they would, um, you know, make sure it was roasting okay, or they would add, they would baste it. So it was very, very communal. Um, How would people, are there different kinds of recipes, or is from one person's household to the next? The, the recipe is very similar. It's pretty similar. It's yeah. a lot of garlic, onion, citrus. Mm -hmm. That's a really specific and distinct uh, flavor, Cuban flavor. Uh, yeah. Cuban flavor. Not a lot of spicy. People think that, some people think that Cuban cuisine is spicy. It's not. It's more like the garlic, the onions, right. green right. peppers, yeah. citrus. Okay. Spain that my friend brought for me right. in, her, in her luggage. And it's delicious, so I'm, look, I'm really excited that we're going to use it in the turkey picadillo. Yes. It's very fragrant and fruity and flavorful. Oh, okay. So thank you, Olga. We chop the onions at home, so we're doing a pound of turkey. This is a recipe that normally is made with beef, but I'm making it with turkey to just make it a little lighter. We're going to do a little bit of garlic, mm -hmm. a few cloves of garlic minced, and uh, some bay leaves. So that'll be our first our first step. Uh, the empanadas are really easy to make. You can put any like you can put so many things in there. You can make them savory. You can make them sweet, and they're a great snack. Cuban cooking is, it has a lot of Mediterranean influence. Right. The, uh, Cuba was a Spanish colony for hundreds of years. Right, right. They took, they, Columbus um, sailed up and he, they took over at the end of the 1400s. Right, right. And they had it up, up until the, um, the end of the 1800s. Oh, like, but Cuba was such a big uh, trade nation yes, absolutely. and they had a lot of sugar tobacco there. so it has a very rich history and then um, you have a lot of the afro-cuban with the santeria yeah, so we're gonna uh, put some garlic in here and it's just minced it's minced garlic mm -hmm.
his final wish was to be buried in Cuba, wow. in, in Bejucal. So it's a small town right outside of Havana by his grandmother. So it was very specific what he wanted. Right. And um, yeah, we did it. He, you know, he passed, uh, he passed on Independence Day, July 4th. Oh, this wow. past year in 2018. Uh, Sorry to hear that. That's yeah. Very, very emotional. It was hard. It yeah. was hard. Uh, the great thing was I was there. My brother was there. He had a very peaceful death. He wasn't, you know, he, lo he was a man who loved life and he really wasn't ready to go. Like he wanted to stick around a little longer, but he was sick. And he fought, like he, for, for years he fought. He convinced his care caretaker to take him to Cuba. He had a whole trip in 2017. He got on the plane in a wheelchair. So he, like the man loved life and to the end, um, really lived it to the fullest. Turkey time. Yeah, this is a pound of turkey, ground turkey. I'm doing, because of the empanadas, a little bit more uh, fat. It's 93% fat, but you can do the very lean turkey if you just want it over rice. I like to start like cutting it up just a little bit before I stick it in the pan, because what you're gonna do is really separate it and mash it with a fork as it's cooking, as it's browning. As it's browning, I'm using the fork to break it up even more. That's what makes picadillo picadillo, is like having almost like a hash, mm -hmm. like a hash um, texture to it. I don't even know if I'm gonna have to add salt because a lot of the times in the olives and the tomatoes there's there enough, is already a salt. which I've learned the hard way where I've added salt without tasting it and then it becomes super salty. Right, right, right. So I've learned that the hard way. So now this is all browned. It's ready to um, for the next step. We're gonna do diced tomatoes, which I probably don't need all of these. I'm gonna put them in there. And, and because we're making empanadas, it, it, this is another thing too. If we were doing this over rice, I'd probably add more. You'd have the juice in it. Because yeah, and I'm putting a little bit of juice in there because it, it does need some juice. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start with this and then go from there. I'm also adding olives. So these are the Spanish olives that I chopped up. The Goya Spanish olives. I live in Inwood, which is very Dominican, so it's easy to find these ingredients there. Um, especially the discs, like these are the empanada discs. Sometimes stores don't carry these, so you have to find wow. your Latin American store to find them. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, this was unusual on the ingredient list, is the raisins. Raisins. So, yeah, so you have the savory sweet aspect of this, mm -hmm. which um, it has golden raisins in it. And it's really tasty. A little tiny, tiny bit of red wine vinegar, not a lot. do got eye. Yeah, that's enough. Mm -hmm. Cumin, very important. just the tiniest amount of cayenne to give it a little bit of a kick yeah make sure it's still warm it's still warm okay just a little bit and i'll taste this later as it simmers and add as necessary so now it's mixing all of these ingredients together One of the things that really stood out for me when I went to my mom's town mm -hmm. is um, there's a lot of guys and they're riding, they're, they're actually driving the bike and then there's women sitting behind them side on the saddle. bike, side saddle. Yeah. And the way they're seated is so perfect and so... Their legs are crossed. Their legs are crossed, yeah. Are that is it's so incredible. Yeah. I'm like, how are they? How I are have to find pictures of that to, to illustrate what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, because it's like, how are they doing this? How, this how are like, they not falling off? Yeah, and looking so <laughs> poised. <laughs> like they're sitting, you know, watching a concert or something. Yes, like, yeah. 
That it's is an, yeah, yeah, and they're just you know they're they're super balanced and yeah, I, 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 effortless, I effortless, yeah, effortless, amazing. Oh yeah, that was um, one of my styling projects. It looked like Ziggy Stardust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was actually we called it Rocky Stardust with a photographer that I work with a lot, um, Eric Garcia Marsh. And this was when I was living in Barcelona and doing a lot of styling work and we put this together. It ended up being published in Neo Dos, which is a really well-known Spanish magazine for their music festival, the uh, music season. Right. And then it ended up winning an award too. It ended up winning the Photographers Association of Spain um, wow. Lux Prize. Yeah. Congratulations. That Thank you. Feel, that had to feel good, didn't Thank it? Thank you. Yeah, wow. it was great. It's still one of my favorite. Wow. It's one of my favorite projects that I've done. Yeah. I'm gonna make um, egg wash. So it's one egg. Little tiny bit of water. And this is gonna in this plastic. There's a plastic in between. And then take your beef. Uh, this is good because you don't really need a lot. Bring it over. Then you take your fork and you crimp the edges. 